Okay guys, so I'm gonna jump right into this tutorial because I know a lot of people are trying to figure out how they can make masks for themselves, their family members, their friends, hospitals, etc. So the first thing you're gonna need is 100% cotton. I like to use 100% cotton because it is breathable. Um, masks get so stuffy when you use a different type of material um, for them. You're going to need some form of elastic. If you can find elastic on the roll, then that's great, but it's out in almost every store that I've been in. So actually one of my awesome soul sisters, um, Tyena Robinson is her name. She suggested getting these from the beauty supply store. These are 99 cents um, in my local store. It comes with all of these and the, I do mine with the head strap and the neck strap. Um, so I use two of these for each mask. And I do sanitize these before I use them. So um, the next thing you're gonna need this is optional, but I highly, highly recommend you guys using a filter. Now this filter did not look like this before I ripped it apart and cut it out, but um, I'll explain that to you guys a little bit later. The next thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need pins. Now you want to use the least amount of pins as possible because you don't wanna poke too many holes in your filter, but I'm gonna show you a way to use them when you have to without compromising the filter next thing you're gonna need and I forgot to put these right here you're gonna need some shears or some scissors so you can cut out everything that you need to cut out the next two things are optional but I recommend them I recommend using floral wire and I have 20 gauge here and I got it from Walmart and um, it is perfect for using the wire for the bridge of the nose so they can kind of contour it to, the, to their nose shape just to make sure no loose particles go above the mask and the last optional thing is a large Ziploc freezer bag. And I got a pack of about 15 of these from Kroger for 99 cents. I disinfected them. I like putting them in here um, and I put the name at the top so I don't get confused and so they stay disinfected and clean because we do wanna be safe. Another tip I'm gonna give you guys really quick is to please wash your hands before you start handling materials because a lot of people are asymptomatic and we don't fully understand this thing, so yeah, just want to be safe when you're giving masks and, you know, trying to do the right thing and help other people just be safe. So, okay, guys, we're going to get started. I'm going to do a voiceover for the rest of this video, and I hope that you guys find this video helpful. So, and it is your pattern. Um, I will put the link in the description for the pattern that I used. It is... Um, craftpassion.com I want to say but I'm gonna put that in there and they have small kid young kid teenager woman and man sizes and these fit perfect in my opinion okay guys so the first thing that you want to do is you want to lay your pre-washed cotton out and you want to fold it over so it's just wide enough for the pattern piece that you're gonna cut out and you want to maximize your use of uh, your fabric I, I call it playing Tetris, like you kind of want to, you know, um, you, you just want to utilize your fab fabric in the best way that you can so you can get the most masks out of it. So I'm just adjusting this. And this is perfect because I can also get um, some cuts going the opposite way at the top, which is great. Now we're just going to get our shears and we are going to cut this pattern piece out. And I also marked on here that I get about six masks per fat quarter. I just go to Walmart and I purchase the fat quarters. Um, they have the plain prints and some, um, some cute little designs for 97 cents a fat quarter. You can also get the packs. They also have the branded ones for the kids. They love the Paw Patrol. It kind of makes them want to wear the masks. I know some kids get irritated by them, but these actually do not irritate you at all. Now we're going to get ready to get our filters. Now the filters normally come with cardboard and a wire 
around them but what you're going to do is you're going to rip all of that off and you're going to be left with this and you're going to flatten that out and use that as a filter um, shout out to nina rose um, she's a designer she actually shared the idea with us in my group that i'm in to use these and i also saw a video where a pediatrician i'll link her at the bottom as well in the comments um, she recommended using these as well so you're going to want to lay your pattern piece you can use one of the pieces that you already cut out to cut out your filter make sure you flatten it out good and just cut all the way around So right now you're going to have four of your pieces of cotton and you're going to have two pieces for your filter. Now what you want to do is you want to grab your elastic. If you have the elastic bands that I showed you earlier, then you're going to want to cut where the glue is and you're going to want to measure from the glueless end. Now I will put the measurements that I use for all of mine. Um, for the women's, I use a 13.5 inch at the top around the head and I use a 10 inch piece of elastic to go around the neck and everybody has said that they are really comfortable so these are the measurements that I'm sticking with so take your measuring tape and measure that out and cut them okay so now you guys are going to want to grab your floral wire um, I will also put the measurements that I use for those here for women's size, I cut about five and a half. You're going to bend the ends and make loops on each end just so they do not poke through the fabric or irritate the skin. Now you can do this with your fingers if you're rough like me, or you can use scissors carefully, or you can use pliers that are used for jewelry making, which will be the easiest option. But I just fold these and I kind of overlap the ends slightly. And you're going to do this on both sides. When you've done that on both sides, you're going to want to make a slight bend in the middle. If it's not completely even, it's okay. Um, it still works just the same. Now we're going to take our cotton fabric pieces and we're going to place right sides together. If you have two different prints uh, because you're doing reversible, then you're gonna wanna put the same prints right sides facing each other. You're going to want to sew straight down the front curve of these and you are going to use a fourth of an inch seam allowance. If you're more advanced at sewing then you do not have to pin these. Um, if you have a little more difficulty keeping your fabric pieces together, I would recommend at least putting two pins in the fabric, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now you're going to want to open that fabric piece up, right side facing up, and you are going to top stitch along at about an eighth of an inch. So I just open it up, fold my seam to the right, and I'm gonna top stitch along. If you're going for optimal curve neatness, then I would say clip the excess off. But I feel like in this instance, you guys, we just need to make as many good quality masks as possible. So it's not necessary at all. So you want to place your right sides facing each other. One inverted the opposite way. It'll make them lay easier together. Then you're going to grab your filter and you are going to do the same thing, sewing a fourth of an inch away from the edge. Now, use the thinnest needle possible 
Um, I just got this machine, so I don't know how to change it yet, but it is actually a pretty thin needle on here. It's a 80, I wanna say, I'm not sure, but it doesn't make big puncture holes, so I'm sure it's perfectly fine. But just don't go get in a denim needle or a leather needle. Once that is done, you are going to want to cut the excess off of the seam allowance because this will allow your filter to lay flat. Now you're going to want to lay your filter with the other two pieces of fabric. I like to flip mine for some reason, I don't know. It really doesn't matter. And I like to lay it inside, matching up the middle seam and I'm going to match up all four corners as well. Now this is what I was telling you guys about the pins. You don't wanna stick the pin straight through because you will have punctures straight through. If you can, try to send it through at an angle. And that way, where you do make holes on one piece of fabric, it will be covered by the other pieces of fabric. So it just reduces the likelihood of having more holes for stuff to seep through. So I'm not going to pin the four corners just because um, as long as I have my middle pinned, I don't really need to. I can kind of keep my fabrics together easily. So I'm going to take that to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a fourth of an inch away from the edge along the top curve and a fourth of an inch away from the edge along the bottom, leaving a two inch opening, which is one inch on each side of the middle seam. And that will be so you can invert your fabric once you're done sewing in your elastic. When we're done with that, we're going to grab our elastic and we're going to pin that along the inside. You're gonna start with the shorter piece because if you start with the longer piece, sometimes it's a little more difficult um, to keep them from twisting around each other. So you're going to want to go in between both fabrics. Make sure that you see prints on both sides because you want to put your elastic between those two pieces of fabric. You're going to want to take it all the way through and pin it close up against your bottom seam and lined up with your side seam. Again, pin at an angle when you do this as well. Now you're going to want to go to the other side, making sure your elastic is flat all the way through. You don't want it twisting. And you're going to do the same, making sure it's flush against the bottom edge and against the side seam. And I'm gonna do that for the longer piece as well. Once all four corners are pinned, you are going to want to sew along both side seams a fourth of an inch away from the edge, from top to bottom.
Now let's grab that wire that we set to the side because this is the part where we're going to want to hand sew it in. Now I choose to hand sew it uh, because when I try to do a zigzag stitch on my other machine, it needs to be cleaned out really bad so it nests really bad on the underside, um, which is when you just get a jumble of threads. So I decided to hand sew and honestly hand sewing it, um, it, it takes about two minutes probably. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the middle and I'm going to hold one loop on one side in place. I am going to take my needle through the back side and around both edges of the loop. Now once I'm done with that, I am going to take it around again and I am going to tie a knot just to firmly secure it in place. It's gonna move, but you don't want it to move too much while you're inverting your fabric. Now you're going to reach through the hole that you left and you're going to take your elastic and you're going to pull it from one side, which will help you to invert your mask. Kind of push one end of your wire through and work everything through. Again, the wire will come up a little bit like it's about to come out, but it won't because you have actually secured it in place pretty good. Now we're going to adjust our wire and just make sure that the top is flat so it'll be easier for us to top stitch. You're going to want to kind of work it up towards the very, very top of your mask. Also make sure that your elastic on all four corners is pulled out because you don't want to start top stitching and it's not pulled out all the way. So cut off any loose threads and you are going to want to fold the pieces at your opening and you're going to want to sandwich them together. Stick your needles in to hold them in place. I will use two needles and just do it at an angle like we did before. So we're going to do a top stitch along the edge where we left our opening and then we're going to do a top stitch along the whole perimeter of the mask a fourth of an inch away from the edge.
Now we are going to sew along the perimeter. I like to start at the bottom corner and work my way all the way around. And you want to pivot every time you get to a, about a fourth of an inch away from your next corner. When you get to the top, make sure you take your time going along the top curve and make sure you are pressing your wire as close to the top as possible so your needle does not go over it and break. So you want to do that even if you have to slightly increase your seam allowance at the top, uh, it won't be noticeable. Just do that so you don't break any needles or mess your machine up. Okay guys, so we are officially done with our masks. Now, didn't I tell you guys that this was super easy, super effective? Um, yeah, I, I've seen where the CDC is telling people to use bandanas or whatever they can find. These are a much better alternative because they do have the 3M filter in them that is supposed to reduce bacteria and viruses and allergens and all that stuff that we do not want to deal with right now. So now what you're gonna do is take your disinfected Ziploc bag and you're going to fold your mask in half. You can bend the wire. Use this time to actually flatten out the loops of the wire as well so they are comfortable on the face. And you're going to want to just insert your mask into your Ziploc bag and label it. If it is going to a specific person, of course. If you are shipping it out, then fold your Ziploc bag in fours, get all the air out of it, and you are going to stick it in a bubble mailer. You can probably get some really cheap from Dollar Tree. I bought mine from USPS because I just thought they were so cute and I just feel like we need a little bit of joy right now. So I wanted something slightly festive. I want to show you guys a few of the kids masks that I have done. Um, the kids love the cool uh, branded prints. They make them want to wear the masks, which is really great because I know a lot of kids probably don't want to wear them. But yeah, I hope you guys really found this video helpful. Um, help somebody, uh, pass it along. You guys stay safe out here. This is a tough time, but it's nothing that we can't get through if we help each other. So love and light to everybody. Say bye bye everybody. I'll call it. <laughs> I'll call it.